OK, all right, so most of you haven't seen this. So OK, that's good information. Uh, this is the only slide I have. I want to give you the link where you can try these features yourselves after I'm done with the demo. So th that is aka.ms Vision Studio. And uh, Cognitive Services for Vision AI has a large foundational model for vision uh, and language. It is a transformer-based model. And it empowers the majority of the vision tasks that I'm going to demo here. And if you want to look up the research papers and read about transformer models and the model architecture, learn about vectors and embeddings, you can search for Project Florence Microsoft and you can find the research papers. OK, so with that, let, let me jump into Vision Studio. So Vision Studio is this web portal where you can try the computer vision capabilities with a no-code experience. Um, this uh, experience, um, you can access this without even being signed in with an Azure account. If you sign in with an Azure account and you bring a computer vision resource, you can bring your own content and you can try these features with your own content. So let me start by showing you uh, optical character recognition. So we have here images uh, already provided for you, or you can bring your own. And then you can push the image through the API, and then it's going to give you the results. This is a handwritten optical character recognition. And then in the JSON tab, you can find the API uh, output in JSON format. So you can find the bounding box, and then you can find the actual text. Um, optical character recognition has support for uh, about 374 uh, languages and for a subset of handwritten languages. So we encourage you to use this for anything which is character recognition. If you have documents which are structured, we recommend that you use form recognizer. So I wanted you know, to give you that. Um, you know, op this is actually useful for when you have like unstructured text in images, but for documents you would use form recognizer, which I'm not going to show here. Uh, the other feature that I want to show you here is background removal. This is something that we added recently. So you can come here with images, and then you can push it through the REST API, and then the API is going to return to you the image with the, the background remove and with transparency. And this is where you can come and uh, replace the background with something you know, that you find more interesting. So we have background removal, and then we also have foreground matting. OK. Um, the next thing that I want to show you is image captions. We've had this for a while, but we are using now the large foundational model. And the model has what we call open world recognition, meaning that it has been trained with su self-supervision for a large data set. So it has this knowledge of the world. So let me show you what I mean by that. I have here an image of my own, an image that I took uh, with my phone when I was in New York City. And then the image description is going to tell you not only that there is a tall building with many billboards and people walking, where you can see here the people, but it, it's in the middle of Times Square in the background, telling you, you know, that it has the landmark recognition. In addition to captions, we had, we've had, sorry, we added support for dense captions. So let me find it. And this captions is giving you recognition of regions inside the image. So I'm going to try this one here. So it's going to give you interesting regions or salient regions inside the image. And it's going to give you the description of each one of these. So we have here the dog. We have the lady. And then again, with the JSON uh, output format, you can find the actual output of the API. So this one, a white cap on a red and white striped surface. So it must be this one. All right. The next thing that I want to show you is searching images with natural language, which is a new task, which is enabled by the fact that the large foundation model is both vision and language. You can try here with uh, images that we provided. So we have here images from the manufacturing field. So you can come here with a search query. We have some provided for you. So this is going to look for similarity between the text input and the images in the, in the image set. So here we have employee wearing a white safety hat. So it's going to find me the top images with relevant content. You can play with the slider. The images are sorted here in terms of like relevance. So if you want to see the most relevant, you play with this slider, and then you get the results. You can come here with your custom query. So I'm going to try people driving forklifts. And then you can find here the results from that data set. So 
the most fun part is actually to try it with your own images. So this is where I encourage you to come and try it with your own images. I have here images of my own um, from my various trips and with my pets. And I was telling you about that open world recognition. So I have here images of my dog. This is a Bichon Frise. So instead of searching for a dog, I'm going to search for the actual breed of the dog. And then sure enough, he's going to find me the images with my dog. Uh, and Let's search for a landmark. I have here a picture from Colorado River, so let me search for Colorado. And then the top result is gonna be this image. This is a landmark, it's actually the horseshoe bend on Colorado River. So actually, let's try that and then see what the model returns. And then you have the top image, that particular image. So the, the whole idea is that the model has been trained with this like vast amount of data. It's not using GPS information to find these kind of images. This is based primarily for the information from the training data set. Similar to how you can search images with natural text, you can search for video. So the same idea here where you have a set of images and we extract vectors and then we do similarity between uh, uh, text query and, and uh, images, then you can do similarity between text query and frames inside videos. So I have here a video from the retail space. And the first thing that I want to show you is summarization. So for summarization, we are sampling keyframes from videos and then we are passing it through image captions and then using we are extracting text and then using GPT summarization we are summarizing the video. So we have here the noteworthy events called out so we have spilled liquid on the floor, employees seeing mopping and the woman shown falling. So let's try to find these keyframes. Uh, I'm gonna try milk on the floor and then it's gonna find me the relevant frames with the milk on the floor. And I like to show that it can tell apart milk, milk from coffee. So this is like different keyframes with coffee on the floor. And then there was a person mopping the floor. So let me come with a custom query. And then sure enough, the model is finding the, key fr the, the frames in the video. So you can come with your own video here. So you can try it with your own video. You have to bring your video in an Azure blob container. In the interest of time, I'm watching the time, I will not be able to show you how to upload your, your video, but it's fairly straightforward. So the next thing that I want to show you is model customization. So the large foundational model can be customized with your own training data set. And while the model has this like recognition of millions of objects in the real world, um, there is always a challenging use case. So I have this scenario of um, finding or recognizing different kinds of fruit, fruits and vegetables on a weight scale. So in that case, we are looking to customize a model with images of fruits and vegetables. So let me tell you what that means. So first of all, you have to create a data set. I have here one already created. So you bring your training data into a blob storage container. Uh, so I'm not gonna go into how you do that for Azure Blob Storage, you know, it's outside of the vision realm, but you bring your training data in an Azure Blob Storage container, and then you label the data. If you are familiar with the custom vision service, that is a different service from what I'm showing you here. The custom vision service is using convolutional network models for, uh, as the basis for the transfer learning. For, for this model customization, this is under Azure computer vision, and then is using the large foundational model as the, as the base model for customization. It has what we call few shot learning capabilities, meaning that you can train the model with way less data. You can train the model with as little as one image per label, but we recommend that depending on how challenging the use case, then you start with about like five to seven images and then uh, monitor the model accuracy and then go from there. So to label the data, we have integrated with Azure Machine Learning data labeling. So you can label the data once with Azure Machine Learning, and you can train a model with cognitive services for vision or with Azure ML, and you can compare the model's accuracy, and then you can pick the model that is most you know, relevant or uh, accurate for you. Um, so let me jump into Azure Machine Learning, and I can show you the labels for this particular data set. So let's look at the data and we will review the labels. 
And this is, you know, for demo purposes. So we have here labels of different kinds of vegetables and fruits. So we have a gala apple, and we have honey, honey crisp apples, and then we have like another one, and then so forth. And then we have like a couple of uh, images of pears. And the idea here is that you label the data, and then you go back to Vision Studio, and then you import the data from, from AML. So if you click on this go to Vision Studio, it's gonna take you back into the same data set from where you started. And then here you add the COCO file format, which is the JSON format of the labels that you labeled in Azure Machine Learning. And then you select your import method, and then it's gonna take you to the process, and then you bring here the JSON file with the labels. So I already have one, which is the fruits and veggies here, and then you are, label, you are ready to train a model. So let me tell you like the process um, for training a model. You give the model a name, I'm gonna call it test one, and then you select the kind of model. So we have support for image classification, object detection, and product recognition. Product recognition is another type of object detection. In this case, my data set was image classification. And you select the training data set. So this is the data set that I showed you before. And then you have the option to select an evaluation data set. We recommend that the evaluation data set is different and has different images from the training data set. Uh, I'm not gonna do that here. And then you select the training budget. And then you can select, if you're not sure, you can always select like a high training budget. Uh, it's not gonna go forever. Um, it's gonna stop for as long as you have data. And then you train the model, the model is queued. And then I already have a model trained here and then you will see the uh, overall performance of the model, in which case it's pretty good, so I can start using this model for inference. So to use it for inference, you go to extract common text from images because this was image classification. You select the custom model. You come here with a file. So let me find, oops, All right. I'm watching the time, so <laughs> I'm, uh, I have, okay, there we go, I found it. All right, so I have a, an image here of fruits and vegetables, so this is gonna run the custom model for fruits and vegetables, and it's gonna give me the labels. Um, the custom model is not preloaded the same way the, the the base models are preloaded, so that's why you see like a little bit of latency um, first time when you try it. And then this one is gonna give you the custom labels that you trained, so we have here Honeycrisp Apple, which is the one which has like the highest confidence. So this is the actual label uh, returned by the custom model. So with one minute to go, um, the last thing that I wanna say is that we also have product, uh, product recognition of uh, packaged goods on a shelf and I have here an image that is gonna uh, return with the pre-built model, the uh, product recognition versus the shelf gap. And then if you train a custom model, which we already have one pre-trained for you, then you can actually use a custom model to return not only the product bonding box, but also the recognition of the product. And then the last thing that I wanna show you is that you can run planogram matching and this is something that retailers, retailers are looking to enable, which is um, they care about how merchandise is organized on the shelf. So using computer vision, they can match the planogram definition of the shelf with the physical dimensions against the recognition of the shelf. So the planogram schema is provided, and then the matching result is gonna tell you whether the products are, are arranged on the shelf according to the planogram. So 34 more seconds to go, I'm gonna end here. Thank you everyone for being here and then if you need to grab me for questions, I'm gonna be outside.